Hello and welcome to Monkeys with Fire. You join me tonight for another Tabletop Gaming Live, and this evening we'll be playing the 2-4 player board game Cutter Land from Hobby World International. If you're brand new to the channel, click the heart to follow the live Twitch stream weeknights Monday, Wednesday and Friday from 7pm. Also, be sure to subscribe and tap the bell icon to receive notifications from YouTube for the latest videos and updates. And now, on with the show. In Cutterland, each player creates their own land out of cut landscape pieces. Their lands will be filled with various creatures intended to challenge heroes that are about to enter them. All creatures score differently. Some of them will eat others, other ones can't stand others' company, so the player will have to adjust their needs to create harmonious lands. Whoever scores the most victory points at the end of the game wins as they have created the most attractive land. All right then, let's jump to the table and I will explain how the game plays. Landscape cards are the main game components. Each card comes with different types of landscapes, creatures and bonuses, towers and walls and bridges. Each card consists of 12 squares. Seven of those squares are filled with creatures and bonuses. The colour of the square stands for one of the three types of landscape. Planes are green. Centaurs, dragons and turtles live there. Moors are yellow. Goblins, dragons and frogs can be met there. While wetlands are blue, krakens, turtles and frogs inhabit them. Several squares of one colour connected either horizontally or vertically are called an area. Its size and contents are important for goblins, centaurs and dragons. Bridges can connect areas of the same type while walls can split them up. All areas make up a player's land. The game consists of four consecutive phases. Building lands, the main phase. Resolving bonuses, hunting, and the grand opening, which is scoring and determining the winner. Building lands. In this phase, the players take turns starting from the first active player and going clockwise until they are all out of cards. During their turn, the active player cuts one of their landscape cards into several pieces, then all players choose one piece each, attach it to their lands and receive its bonuses. The active player's turn consists of four steps. Cutting a card, choosing pieces, receiving bonuses and expanding their lands. Then the active player passes the scissors to the player on their left and they become the new active player. Now the players must let all of their predators go hunting. During this phase you will place bones tokens on top of your devoured creatures. The squares with devoured creatures are considered empty. Krakens are the first to go hunting. Each kraken devours all creatures around itself in both connected and diagonal squares, except for other krakens and creatures in towers. Two squares with a bridge between them are considered connected. So if the Kraken square is connected to a square with a creature they can devour, the Kraken will devour it. One Kraken can devour up to 12 creatures around itself. Walls disconnect connected squares so you can protect a creature from being devoured by the Kraken with them. However, if a creature is in a diagonal square from the Kraken, it can't be protected by placing a wall. Dragons are the second to go hunting. Each dragon devours one creature in its area, except for other dragons, and creatures in towers. If there are fewer dragons than other creatures that can be devoured, the player decides which of them are to be devoured. If there are more dragons than other creatures that can be devoured, all of them are devoured by the dragons. All creatures in your land will score victory points individually according to the rules for their type. Additionally, you will score victory points for all the towers and wall bridge tokens you received but did not use. At the end of the game, Krakens will devour the creatures around them. Score two victory points for each creature devoured by your Kraken. Score seven victory points for each area with two, no more, no less, dragons. 
If there are one or three or more dragons in an area, you don't score any victory points. The more goblins you have in an area, the more VPs you score. One goblin in an area is worth two victory points. Two goblins are worth five. Three goblins are worth nine. And four goblins are worth a massive 14. The fifth and sixth goblin in an area is worth two victory points each. The number of VPs scored for turtles depends on the number in the whole land. If you have only one turtle in your land, it scores 10 victory points. If there are two turtles, you score five victory points. If there are three or more turtles in your land, then you score nothing for them. You lose two victory points for each frog. Score one victory point for each plain square in a centaur's area. Each centaur area is scored only once, even if there is more than one centaur within it. All right, so what we'll do is we will deal out three cards each to start off with. This is to each player. Seeing scissors in the game, just, I don't know, I don't like this. This just makes me very uneasy. We've got to imagine that these, these are now Sarah's hands. Sarah's got the scissors. So, Sarah, this is... Uh, I need to invest in razors. Screw toilet paper. <laughs> 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 if those are my lady arms, I'm in trouble. So tell me how you want to cut this card into three pieces. We're going to cut it in a square, a two by two square. The goblin, the dragon, the kraken, and the wall. That's your first cut. Here we go. Scissors live on channel. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. I'm cutting. Oh, no, don't cut. It's cut. Oh, that it's sound. Cut. Don't there you go. <laughs> oh, there we go. There's the first piece cut. <laughs> oh, okay. that ripple up my spine. All right. Next cut. Where do you want it? Um, so it'll cut between the turtle and the water. And the two squares, so straight up there next yeah. to the dragon. Oh, oh, right. oh, oh, oh! Do it, do it, do it! Yes! All right, so we have our three pieces, and it's going to be me to choose first. Which piece do I want? I'm going to take the piece with the dragon. Orgy, which piece do you want? The right one. You want the one with the turtle and the goblin? So these are our initial starting pieces. It's now my turn to take up a card. This is the card that I have. And again, I now cut this into three pieces. Okay. Those are the three pieces. So Augie, you get to choose which piece would you like? I will take the dragon so now you've taken that piece now you've got to decide where do you want this piece attached to your existing land it can go anywhere uh, so long as it is connected to an edge you can't do any diagonal points the bottom yeah you can have it in the bottom that's not a problem sarah which of the tiles are you going to pick up Let's go with the L shape, and we're going to place the frog next to my kraken. So I'm assuming you're going to go something like that, yeah? All right, there we go. Because the kraken eats any creature that is around it. So it, at this moment in time, is quite happily going to eat the dragon, it's going to eat the goblin, and it's going to eat the frog. A frog at the end of the game is minus two points. If I put that there... The Kraken will eat the goblin, the two goblins, in fact, and the dragon. Okay, so now it's over to Orgy. We draw up Orgy's card for her to cut. Just like yourself, Sarah, Orgy has beautiful hairy arms. So, Orgy, how do you want to cut this card up? I want to go three, like and a then the center one has an, yeah, T. A T like from... a T shape. Three on the top, one down the middle, or two down the yes. middle, like a T from Tetris. Okay. One down the middle. One down the middle from the top, yes? Yes. All right, here we go. So that's going to be all of the planes, the green planes. 
Okay, so there we go. You've had your tea cut out. What would you like to cut next? I'm probably shooting myself in the... Ooh, Augie's making it fun. Fun shapes. Um, another T, but right now it's situated on the left side. So, so it's blue, 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 yellow. So those are the pieces, and since this was Augie's turn, it is Sarah to choose first. We are going to take the left side L, and we're going to rotate it so that the little one is up. And we're going to put the little goblin underneath the kraken and the dragon underneath the dragon. Okay, so you want something like that. All right, so you've taken your card. It is now my turn. What do I want to do? I think it's going to be obvious. I'm going to take this card. I'm going to place my little frog right up there. All right, and so, Augie, you have your card. You have the T with the Kraken and the Gobbo. All right, then put it next to the dragon. All right, then. So, it goes back over to Sarah, your next card. Here we go. How would you like to cut up this card? Let's have fun with this. Go for We're going to go with the Augie system of making a Tetris shape. Do you see the grass, then Kraken, then water, then tower? All right, so you guys get to pick what you want. Yes, I'm gonna Go take, on. I'm gonna take that piece. I'll take the tower piece. Okay, where would you like your piece to be placed? I would like to have my Kraken next to my Kraken. You want your Kraken next to your Kraken. So, I'm assuming... Something Tower on top of the Kraken. Yes, we're switching it around. That's a good call there. I think that looks about right. Over to Sarah. Where are you putting your Goblin? Goblin top left. Goblin top left, yeah. that's. Just going to show you my card. That is what I am going to be cutting from. All right, there you go. So you've got your three pieces out, and it is Augie to choose. I like the the desert part. With the gobbo, yes? Yes. And where would you like that placed? That matches your other On one top. with the goblin shape. It's in an L shape, no, too. No, let's, let's put it next to it. Oh, cute. Next, next to? To the right. To the right? In the same orientation as it lay there. Excellent. Over to Sarah. I would like to take the goblin and we'll rotate it so he's in a line with... Uh, yeah, we'll rotate it so it makes three goblins in a row. Three goblins in a row. All right. Over to me. What am I doing? I am going to put... Do I want to put that there? No, we'll put him there. Okay. There we go. Augie, it is now your card. Uh, yeah. L cut the bottom two rows off. And then... Put the frog in its own different dimension with a block of water on top. Let's um, take the Kraken and the two goblins. Yep. And we are going to place it so those two goblins line up with my leftmost goblin. Okay, that's, that's fine. You can have that. Uh, ooh, all oh, right, well, I've got to go, and I'm going to take the frog. I'm a frog, I'm going to put the frog on in there. So, Augie, you are left with the turtle, the dragon, and the bridge wall. Where would you like this placed? I want the turtle to go in that corner. Turtle, tower, water. You want the turtle to go into that corner. I'm going to think... You want something like that? Yes. Right then, final set of cards. It is over to Sarah. And this is your card. How would you like this to be cut? We're going to cut the goblins. So, first cut would be straight along the top. So, pretty much you're separating the yellow areas from the card. So, a three by one. So, goblo is gone from the top. What's the next cut? We're going to cut out that little goblin area. 
Oh, right, you really are going Tetris here, aren't you? Oh, what do I want to do? You could flip it upside down and fit it right in that little nook. I feel it would be wrong to disappoint now, so I will take that large piece. You just piece. might have to shift your your lands over to the right a bit. No, 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 it'll, it'll fit, it'll fit. It's all good. Oh no, I meant on the left side, so it would all fit. <laughs> oh, oh, I see, yes, yes. But no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> yes, yes, but no. There we go. I think that is, that's exactly how we want it. Uh, okay, and it is then over to Orgy. So you've got two goblin pieces. Uh, which gobbo piece do you want? I will take the three ones. Got, yeah, and where do you want it placed? Perfectly where it's supposed to go. You mean right at the top there? I think, I think yes. yes. That, looks, that looks nice and pretty, so that can go in there. All right, and Sarah, you have your two piece with the gobbo. Yep, we're just going to put him right next to the two gobbos standing up. Yep. So he goes in there. I think you two are doing really well, the goblins, aren't you? Okay. My final card. There we go. And so it is Orgy to choose first. I will take the gobbos. You're taking the gobbos. Where would you like the gobbos to go? Flat on top of my other gobbles, where Flat. they belong. On top. There we go. All right. Sarah, what are you going to do? We are going to take that dragon piece, and we are going to place the dragon underneath my other dragon. You're going to place the dragon under the other dragon. So that's okay. All right. <sighs> How am I going to do this? There we go. And it is then over to Orgy, the very last card of the game. There's your card. How would you like this cut? I would like to cut the yellow as one piece, the green as a piece, and the green and the blue as a piece. Ooh, nice cuts. <laughs> Thank you. Right then, Sarah, which of these fine cuts would you like to have? Ooh. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> Has somebody worked out that something is not going to plan? Okay, let's take the Kraken. And he can just snuggle right on up straight. So that way he's next to the, he's under the two water pieces. Yeah, like how it's laying right now, just slide it on up. I know what I'm, I'm taking this piece. No, he took that piece. I am definitely taking that piece. Uh, but do I want to put it in there? No, I don't want to put it in there. I've got to be careful taking this piece. In fact, that's a, this is a bad piece to take. It, it's a very bad piece. In fact, actually, yeah, I don't want to take that piece. Look, lucky you, Augie. <laughs> I'll take that piece. We'll go up there. So you get your green piece. What? Where do you want your green piece going? I want the blue one right under the dragon. Yes, exactly, yes. There we go. There we Everyone go. happy. Everyone's happy, yes. All right then, so that is the end of the main phase of the game. Let's count them up. So you got one, two, three, you got four walls, Sarah, and you've got one tower. I have three walls. And Orgy, you have two walls and a tower. So we'll start with you, Sarah. Would you like to use any of your walls or your tower? I mean, I can use all of them, right? You can use as many as you like. For any that you don't use, it's one point. All right, so you've got two walls left. What's next? Yeah, I think I'm okay. You think you're okay? All right, excellent. I am looking at my board to just see what I want to do. So that's going to... I think I'm actually okay. I don't think I need to do anything. All right, Augie, you have two walls and a tower. How do you want to use them? I would like to put my centaur in a tower. Centaur in a tower, yes. Put a wall next to the that dragon all the way at the right, and that's... So you want to make sure that dragon's not going to eat your goblins. 
All right then, so let's do the scoring. Right, there you go then. That is the end of the game. So indeed, uh, Sarah gets 48 points. I, I got 42. I like this game. Orgy, 35. <laughs> Oh, 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 you like it because you won. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you like. I thought that I had my dragons connected, and of course, I forgot all about that kraken eating that dragon. Uh, I did not pick up a tower to protect the dragon that was going to get eaten by the kraken. If I had done, uh, I would have just picked you at the post by one point. I needed to have got a tower. Uh, no, you had enough walls to save yourself. You just chose not oh, to use your walls. You're right. Oh, no! <laughs> you're like, if only I had the tools to save my things. And then we're like, monkey, you got your tools right in front of you. And then you're like, oh, no. <laughs> Shoulda, woulda, couldas. That's life. <laughs> That would have gotten me seven extra points. I would be at 49. No! You wouldn't have been at 49. Come on, let's try it. Let's. I believe you're at 45. This, this, is, this is what I like about it, that as you, you try and do the best you possibly can, but actually you can look back and go, oh, there's something else that I could have done. I, I enjoyed that. I, and and I, I hope that you two did. Uh, yeah, that was a, that's a lot of fun. I like it. I, you know what, at first I was like, I don't know, we'll see. But then once I kind of understood the mechanics of it and, you know, knowing kind of the, you don't want frogs, you only want one turtle, you kind of know those goals that you want to really focus on and then kind of mold it around that. I don't know. I liked it. Hey, you can bring this game over for game day. Is this, is this, is this a keeper one? Yeah. Is this one to keep? We can, uh... we'll cut up some cards here. I enjoyed it, but like I thought, I didn't really have a lot of brain space to keep all the different things into account. It's a bit of a gamble when you cut up your own card and you think you might want that piece and then you don't get it. Right, you almost have to cut it in a way to where any card that might be left could be beneficial. Okay then, so that brings us to the end of tonight's show. Thank you to Sarah and Augie for joining me playing Cutterland from Hobby World International. We'll have another great game to try out on next Friday's TFI Games Night. But until then, bye for now. <laughs>